This episode was proudly made possible by Subaru. The selfie, reviled, loved, duck-faced. What can the not at all humble self-portrait of the internet age teach us about ourselves? Howdy Internets, Trace here for D News. Selfies are everywhere these days. The Oxford Dictionary says the frequency of the word selfie increased 17,000% from 2012 to 2013. That is a lot. Since it was first used in 2002 by a drunk woman in Australia, selfie has come a long way. <laughs> it's, you know, it's really grown up. A new study out of the City University of New York looks at our favorite way to share our faces in five major world cities and uncovered something about ourselves in all of that duck-faced chatter. Taking 20 to 30,000 Instagram photos from New York City, Bangkok, Moscow, Sao Paulo, and Berlin, they narrowed that field down to about 640 from each city. They approximated the sex, age, head angle, and mood of the thousands of images. And from their data, we learned a few things. The most surprising of which is though they seem pervasive, only 4% of all photos on Instagram are actually selfies. The rest are mostly pets and food and monuments and pictures of your friends. The median age of a selfie taker is 23.7, which means they were born around 1990. And most of those people inflicting selfies on others are ladies. In Bangkok, women take 1.3 times more selfies than men, and in Moscow, 4.6 times more selfies. Although, in every city, men who selfied tend to be older overall. Russian men really do need to step up their selfie game, though. Unsurprisingly, Moscow is also the sad selfie capital. Very few smiles to be had there. But Sao Paulo, they are nearly all smiles. It's, you know, kind of nice, and Carnival is coming up. Maybe that's why the Brazilian lovelies adopt such a vicious head angle tilt in their selfies, 16 degrees. Men only do 11 degrees. By contrast, New Yorkers seem to prefer a kind of straight on look with just a little bit of a head turn. You need to be able to see their ball and earrings after all. From a research perspective, this is a more proof of concept than a true scientific study. It's not the first time Instagram photos have been used en masse, but the researchers at CUNY wanted to show communication by social media photography as a form of interpersonal interaction rather than just an art gallery. They weren't looking at likes, but instead using the image images as a sampling of the population of regions as a way to translate our digital selves into real-world conclusions. Using the data gathered from image recognition software and humans who picked through the thousands of images, data sets could be made from your photos to help statistics, sociology, media and communication studies, and other more scientific research on sexuality, gender studies, political influences, cultural comparisons. This is exactly what the researchers wanted. They are hoping that we we can look at these images as a window into ourselves and learn something from it. You can play with the data yourself and come up with your own results. They have all 3,200 selfies there too. And I spotted Jerry Seinfeld in there, weird. Where do you take the most selfies? At work, in the bathroom, in your car? Taking selfies while driving is not recommended. However, Patrick Norton is the kind of guy who could probably rig up a car thing to take selfies for you so you don't have to take your hands off the wheel. Our favorite do-it-yourselfer recently teamed up with Subaru to customize three high-mileage Subaru cars, one with a mobile office, one with a mobile camping station, and another with a custom bike rack. Also, their charity-minded owners can keep doing their thing. Check out the Second Chance Subaru series at revision3.com slash Subaru, and be sure to tweet us your selfies at DNews, and don't forget to subscribe here for more every week. See you later.